Hello everyone, I am Shivangi Agarwal from Actuators Educational Institute. Today I will be talking about CP2 and CP3 actuarial papers, what it is all about and how we provide classes for the same. So CP2 is a modeling paper. Uh, there are two papers, paper 1 and paper 2 which generally happens on two consecutive days. Um, both of them have modeling. Uh, Excel part and the MS Word part. So in case of paper one, uh, you will be given a scenario and a few questions. You have to model the entire thing on Excel. Uh, you might be given some data for which you need to do some data validations, data checks, data correction and you have to proceed ahead with the model and you have to build your model on your own. The same model, whatever you have built, whatever data checks and corrections you have made, you have to present it in the form of audit trail in MS Word. This is your paper one, which is of 100 marks. Paper two, uh, again, they give you a scenario and they give you an Excel spreadsheet that contains a few uh, modeling parts, which has already be, been done uh, by one of your colleagues. And you have to build up on that particular model, complete the model and produce a summary report on the same. Summary report contains lots of things. So data checks, data validations, objectives, assumptions, uh, methodology followed, uh, results, next steps. So all these things are covered in the summary portion, which is written in MS Word. So again, this is a 100 mark paper. Um, they will take 50% of paper 1 marks and 50% of paper 2 marks and give you an average. That will be uh, the score which you will be uh, getting for CP2. Right. So you have to generally get uh, that greater than 60 or whatever is the passing marks in that particular term for IFA. For IA, generally it's somewhere around 50. For CP3, this is a communication paper and uh, they will be uh, there will be a scenario which will be given to you uh, on the basis of that scenario you will be given uh, your question paper so in case of cp3 the pattern for ifoa is you are given a scenario three days three working days prior to the examination that scenario needs to be read in those three days needs to be understood and on the examination day you will be given an exam paper which will be a build on on the existing scenario and there will be a few questions. So uh, this is your IFOA. In case of IEI, you will be given the scenario and the question on the very same day at the time of examination in the exam paper itself. So 80 marks is the communication. Uh, so entirely you have to draft either a letter or a, a meeting paper or an article or an email, whatever it is, you have to draft that. That will be of 80 marks and 20 marks is the reflective questions. So generally three to six questions are there, which is basically a reflection on the communication, 80 marks communication, which you have done, right? So this is all about CP2 and CP3, how the paper pattern is. For CP2, uh, generally, you uh, if you have knowledge of CM and CS papers, then it's a good thing. However, uh, maybe just having CM1, CS2, one knowledge can also be fine but if you have cm1 cm papers cm1 cm2 cs1 cs2 cleared then giving cp2 becomes easier uh, cp3 uh, you again need cm and cs papers um, done so that you can work on the scenarios whichever scenario whatever type of scenario comes in the question so this is all about your CP2 and CP3 paper pattern. What is required before you start these papers? Now, how many hours is required? So CP2, uh, since there are paper one and paper two, there are lots of models which you can practice. So the practice time for CP2 is higher than that of CP3. Uh, CP2 ideally needs 80 to 100 hours of preparation and CP3 again can be done with 70 hours of preparations. Now let's come to our class uh, format. So we have weekend live lectures on Saturdays and on Sundays, which is taken by me. And there are some industry experts as well who will be taking up these two papers. So along with me. In these live lectures, we have group interaction in the form of Google Meet classes, wherein 
the students discuss the models that they have produced since it's a very subjective paper from the point of view of CP3 and from the point of view of CP2 the model that we make for a particular scenario will be different for all of us so we discuss different aspects of the model different aspects of audit trail summary in case of CP3 we discuss different aspects of communication how to get that 80 marks uh, how to score good in that 80 marks so again it's a very subjective paper so all of that discussion wherein students and the faculty is discussing together happens in the live lectures generally of 1 to 1.5 hours each on Saturdays and Sundays. This is done so that all the working students can also attend the live classes. Attending live classes for CP2 and CP3 is very important because it's important to understand even uh, those one markers, one two markers wherein you can score at least full marks, right? Because again, it's a subjective paper. So there are some parts which uh, can give us full score, whereas there are some parts which may not uh, give us full marks. So interacting in the live classes, attending the live classes are very, very, very crucial for CP2 and CP3. Again, uh, there will be few video lectures which will be provided to you once you enroll for the course. So for CP2, approximately 15 to 17 hours of video lectures are there, which covers entire uh, paper one and paper two model. Uh, it's a um, complete model uh, build up is there from the scratch along with audit trail and summary. Again, for CP3, 7 to 8 hours of video lectures wherein we cover one particular scenario, how to draft the communication and the reflective questions. We also have doubt solving classes towards the end of the term wherein the students have completed a lot of papers since there is no particular form. Um, uh, particular material on CP2 and CP3 uh, in the form of uh, any uh, any material in the form of provided by the institute. So they provide one particular material, but that material does not contain a lot of information. You need to practice a lot of past papers over here for CP2 and CP3 both. So again, if you have any doubts, we have lots of doubt solving classes towards the end, which can happen on the weekdays and weekends as per to the students. Uh, it can be individual and grouped out sessions both. We also conduct mock examinations towards the end of the curriculum wherein the mock examinations or personalized feedback will be provided by me and the faculty uh, who are there along with me. So these uh, feedbacks that we provide you are uh, personalized feedbacks and we cover each aspect of CP2 marking and CP3 marking. We try to follow the pattern which is followed uh, in your final exams as to in each part two marker one marker three marker five marker how much you can score how you can improve that particular portion uh, again uh, personalized guidance is also provided by us uh, because the students are generally working so how to manage the time with your work and these papers uh, how much to practice so weekly uh, targets will be provided to you uh, weekly targets will be provided to each student depending on your depending on your working hours uh, maybe I will be guiding you if you have to give two hours or one hour or three hours depending on two things one is your how many how much working hours are there for you and secondly uh, I will see and analyze how you are responding in the live lectures accordingly I will guide you how much time maybe you need to increase your durations or maybe you can uh, stay at the same duration so generally if you are taking out two hours every day it's good enough. Uh, some days definitely you will not be able to uh, give that to us. But yes, giving one and a half to two hours is good for both the papers, even together if you're appearing. Other than that, personalized feedback for personalized guidance will be provided by me as per to your uh, requirements. So these are the basic things that we provide you once you take up the classes for CP2 and CP3. Now, if you see the passing marks, the passing marks is not very great for these two papers. Since uh, these are comparatively easier when you compare with CP1 or CM2, CS2 such papers uh, in terms of the number of hours that you have to denote uh, to these papers which are comparatively less. But at the same time, if you see the passing percentage, that is 
not very great uh, especially also from iia so it's very very important if you want to clear these papers in your first attempt you need to understand that where you can score marks since it's a very subjective paper you may not always get all the points correct in your communication for cp3 or in cp2 you may not always be able to produce an optimal or ideal model so again uh the data validation how to do the data checks what to include in your audit trail what to include in your summary and also there is a time crunch that generally happens in case of cp2 examinations so how to manage that time crunch how to complete the paper in that 3 hours 15 minutes or 3 hours 20 minutes which is given to you generally students are not able to complete uh, paper one entirely so where and you have to focus more because audit trail contains approximately 60 to 70 Seventy percent of the marks, and models ha model has thirty to forty percent of the marks. Students, what they do is generally they give a lot of uh, time to the modeling and they ignore audit trail or summary. But the most marks which is there is to the audit trail and summary. So how to improve on it? What points to focus on? And specifically for each student because each student is different. So how for you? What is working better? How much you need to practice? how many more papers you need to sit and give as a mock all these things will be taken care of in the live classes again for cp3 it's the same thing so it's 80 marks is entirely for one question which is your communication that covers a lot of aspects your language your tone uh, the way of writing what all points you have included uh, have you written two large sentences how are you giving your section headings how many sections you have to write what graphs what charts numbers to write in your communication all these aspects are covered in our classes and in very much details because in each class we try to focus on one particular part of the entire communication and secondly that the two, 20 marks reflective questions are again very very important which all the students generally ignore so and they end up getting very few marks there and end up failing the paper may maybe just a margin of one or two uh, two to three marks right so we also focus on that reflective questions how to answer the uh, question what keywords you need to use in your answers because using those keywords will only get you the marks right so that is also very very important all these things are exhaustively discussed in our live lectures which are very interesting because all the students put forward their point of view and we understand whether that is correct or not and how can we improve on it so these things are there now in order to connect with us you can contact us on 8100598543 or 8582908949 you can also visit our website www.actuatorseducation.com thank you